Hello everyone. In this video today, I'm going to share some really cool research I've just discovered to help us answer the question, do shoes cause bunions? I've just uncovered this and had a read of it in between patients today, and I'm going to share the content with you, including at the very end, a really cool quick test that you can see yourself if your shoes might be contributing to bunion formation. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Andrew Wind. I am a foot and ankle physiotherapist and I love treating all things foot and ankle. And in this video, we're going to dive into some really cool research I've never seen before involving digging up dead bodies to have a look at their feet and all their bones. Here we have it, the title of this particular journal article from 2021 published in the International Journal of Paleopathology, as you can see, is Fancy Shoes and Painful Feet. It's an investigation into hallux valgus. Hallux valgus is the term for when the great toe deviates away from the inside of the arch to the outside. We typically call that a bunion when the formation of excessive bone or the exposure of the metatarsal head becomes really prominent and painful. So the term hallux valgus is a valgus angle at the great toe. That's where we get that from. Now, what these authors really have done, I've never seen anything like it before. They went back to a medieval England area, Cambridge, and they dug up 177 bodies from various parts around the Cambridge region. And what they were looking at was the osteology, so the bones. And um, what they've done is look to see if there's any association between the angulation or formation of bunions and trends, social trends that were happening at that particular time. The results are absolutely fascinating. First and foremost, uh, from the 177 adults that uh, the human remains they dug up, uh, they, they found hallux valgus in 18% of that population. Now, that's good because that's consistent with what we see in modern literature, which is generally around about 23%, depending on which study you read. Generally around the world, roughly 25% of the adult population have bunions, which is interesting. So that's consistent. So what they really looked at here was um, what the prevalence was uh, according to where the bodies were buried because we know that uh, certain socioeconomic groups, the higher socioeconomic groups inside the towns, in particular, the really wealthy friary, the friars, uh, wore different clothes, in particular, different footwear. And this is where it gets really, really interesting. So the highest prevalence of bunions was in the cemetery in the friary. That was 43%. I'm closely followed by the hospital cemetery, which is also in town. Then the more rural, further out of town, um, parish cemetery had a much, much lower prevalence of 10%. Um, and further, even further out was 3%. So it it's progressively drops down. So there's a clear association there with the location. So then they looked a little deeper as to what social trends were happening, in particular footwear. Okay, here on this page is showing you the type of footwear that the friars were wearing. Interestingly, the males in the sample population overall had a higher incidence of bunions than females. So that's really, really interesting because we know in modern uh, research, um, prevalence of bunions is much, much higher in females. And we have always thought that maybe there's an association between the current footwear and in fact, for the last 30, 40 years, the footwear that females tended to wear being high heels narrow toe pointy fashionable shoes in females may have something to do with the prevalence. And this feeds into that fact and almost confirms it because it is far more unusual in modern day for males to have bunions. Whereas here, the males in particular, again, the friars were the ones that were wearing this type of footwear. We can see just how narrow it is and how that is not shaped like a normal foot that is broadest at the toes. Um, it really narrows down and is going to put inwards pressure on the toes, pushing the, the toes in. So that's likely to cause bunionettes and bunions. In fact, I wish these authors um, that were looking at this, and perhaps they still will, looked at for the prevalence of bunionettes as well, because we know a 
uh, pressure on the outside here of the fifth toe can push that in call, and we call that a Taylor's bunion or a bunionette. So I'd love it if they went back and had a look at uh, whether there was a prevalence of increased prevalence of bunionettes as well. So back to the association between those that wear this wore this type of footwear and those that wore more traditional footwear in the time boots out in the rural area. Uh, the other interesting finding was not only did they have more bunions, but those that had hallux valgus also had a much, much higher incidence of other fractures. Now, are we saying that bunions cause the other fractures? Well, maybe. There's an association clearly in more modern studies. Uh, Mikkel in particular uh, showed that the presence of a hallux valgus, the presence of a bunion, is an independent falls risk. We know that if you fall over, you are more likely to fracture other bones. And that's exactly what they found in this sample group. They looked at all the bones, in particular the upper limbs. And that's what we see here where uh, the authors here identified uh, much greater incidence of fractures to the upper limb, um, even the lower limb as well, in particular the upper limb and those who had hallux valgus. So put simply, the people that wore tight shoes, more likely to have hallux valgus. The more likely you are to have hallux valgus, the more likely you are to have other fractures uh, in the rest of the body, in particular the upper limb. So there you have it. Have we answered the question that shoes actually cause bunions? Well, this is a pretty strong um, indicator that there is a clear relationship. Now, I mentioned earlier at the start of this video that I would show you one simple tip you can do yourself. And I have uh, pulled out a inner sole from one of our uh, patient's shoes uh, that we saw earlier today in the clinic. And here I've got uh, Freddie the foot. This is the uh, foot that we use for surgical um, explanations. It's got an exostosis here and a bunion formation clearly. What you want to do is grab your inner sole out, put your foot on it so you stand on it, and notice whether there's any overhang of the bones. Notice if there's any overhang of the bones on either side of your inner sole. If there is, chances are that shoe is too narrow and it will be putting pressure on your toes, just like the friars footwear back in the 14th and 15th century. So make sure you check that out. Is there any overhang? If there is, you really need wider shoes. Otherwise, your risk of bunions and then Conversely, your risk of falls actually goes up. So there you have it. Hopefully we've answered that question uh, much more clearly for you. Do shoes cause bunions? Well, I think we have um, our answer that indeed they are a big contributing factor. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please like it and uh, feel free to subscribe if you're interested in other bunion related content. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.